so this is uh, this is Vivia. Um, on the um, on the bottom is our water treatment device. On the top is the treatment device, and this is a um, a uh, um, a monitor, uh, a wireless monitor that allows a patient or a carer to control the device while sitting in a chair or sitting or lying in a bed, for example. Um, we briefly touched on high dose hemodialysis. We've um, we've we made intentional, and Derek, I think, will talk a little about this. We made intentional design choices so that this machine and the support that goes with it can easily deliver high dose hemodialysis, meaning it's easy for patients to put themselves on treatment um, at least every second day and at times five or six or seven times per week. And it's easy and safe for them to be put on treatment overnight. Um, and this is not a this is not a new concept <coughs> of nocturnal hemodialysis or short daily hemodialysis. These concepts have been in the literature and lots of evidence supporting that type of therapy. What we try to do from a design perspective is enable more patients to have access to that therapy, and that's the key piece. It's uh, not new therapies. Um, but limited patients get access to that therapy today. Our design and our thinking around the design elements was driven towards how do we enable more patients to have access to that therapy. And part of that is the patient is the primary operator. It's got very unique safety features, <coughs> which were critical in, in a lot of our design choices. It was built for the home, and as many of you, as you probably all know, was CE marked um, at the end of December last year. We have done some clinical studies. We've done a lot of bench work, a lot of bench data, like most new devices have to, you need to do for most new hemodialysis devices. We also did some clinical studies which don't always occur with new hemodialysis devices. And we actually did that because of some very unique, innovative features in the device. I'm not going to take you through the details unless you have specific questions, but um, the key elements of any hemodialysis device is does it remove solutes? Does it remove toxins, kidney toxins? And on the left hand side is just a graph of the study where we followed patients for up to 10 weeks and we measured um, something called urea, um, which is, here we go, standard weekly k B urea, which is a small molecule. It's a marker of uremic toxins. And we followed patients weekly on Divya. And these are the um, the averages with the confidence intervals around those averages for 10 weeks. Now the guidelines are for patients to achieve at least a standard k v urea of 2 per week. So as you can see, all our patients, all our measurements are above 2 per week. So this simply says that the device clears toxins like it should. That's all it says. The one on the right is a measure of how well the device is able to remove fluid. Um, and so if you think about a device again, does it remove toxins like it should, and does it remove fluid like it should? And the reason for removing fluid is as you develop kidney failure, you start to produce less and less urine. The kidneys can't filter your blood, it makes less and less urine, and some patients end up making no urine at all. So you need to be able to take that excess fluid off a patient, and you need to be able to do it accurately. So what's on the right? simply says that Vivia removes fluid like it should. This is just performance of the device that we tested in clinical studies. Now one of the um, key design elements I just mentioned was we wanted to make this for patient. So the majority of other devices that you will see if you walk around the floor downstairs for example is you'll see that they were designed for nurses and doctors. This is designed for the patient. And as you can see, we've got uh, not just fonts and wording and large buttons that are designed for the primary operator being a patient, but also graphic animation. And that graphic animation is not just useful for helping patients set up and take down the device when they're done with the treatment but it's also useful to help them take, to take them through uh, alerts or alarms that occur with any form of hemodialysis treatment. 
as I said, safety was critical in our thinking. Uh, one of the fears that patients express when anyone talks to them about home hemodialysis and high dose hemodialysis is, what happens if I get home and my needle comes up? So there's a general fear around their safety. So what we've done is uh, we've designed a system using a uh, first of its kind access disconnect sensor so that if a needle does come out when the patient is sleeping or just by accident when they're awake, then the device stops, blood stops pumping. So there's no way for the patient to exsanguinate, to bleed to death because of this unique safety feature. We also um, wanted to ensure that the burden on the patient um, and the caregiver at home was minimized. And so one way we, um, we built this into the design of system was when a patient is done with the treatment, they're able to take their needles out, <coughs> put the tubing back into the device and close the door and walk away. Um, so the system is designed to allow an extended use of the dialyzer. Today, most dialyzers, that's the membrane that's used to clear solutes, clear toxins, is, um, is changed every treatment. It's a burden for the patient to actually take down all the tubes, remove the tubes, remove the dialyzer, clean the machine after end of treatment, and then the next day put on, or the following day, put on new tubes, new dialyzers, <coughs> etc. So we have um, built a system allowing the patient to uh, use the dialyzer multiple times, use the blood set multiple times. Again, this was designed primarily to reduce the burden on the patient. And we've got really good data showing the safety of that, as well as um, the clearance of toxins with multiple use um, with extending the use of the dialyzer. So we've got pretty good bench and clinical data supporting that. The other, the other piece is, um, again, around ease of use. This is the water system down at the bottom of the machine. So typically, if a patient goes home with a dialysis machine, most dialysis machines today, they would have a hemodialysis machine set up somewhere in their house, and separately they'd have a water treatment device, sometimes in a separate room. So the water treatment device is fully integrated into our system. It talks to our system. Um, it's also set up for the patients, when needed, to, for the patients to change the filters. So that, again, the, the machine is designed for the patient to be able to do that. The machine also, using the user interface, guides the patient in how to do that. Because if it is only once every two months, or once every month, or once every three months, um, it's easy to forget how to do that. The machine actually guides the patient, and it's developed to allow sort of easy removal of the filters and putting in new filters as well.